After parenting six kids, co-pastoring a church, writing and speaking, Laura Harris-Smith was on the brink of adrenal failure and didn't even know it. Today, she's a certified nutritionist and she joins us with the backstory of her new project. Welcome back to The Harvest Show, Laura. Thank you. Nice to be here. Great to have you. <laughs> okay, six kids, pastoring a church. You mm -hmm. were... You were on a roll. I mean, you Easy. probably thought you were doing mm -hmm. a great thing, mm -hmm. you know, for the Lord and yeah. kind of not yeah. taking care of yourself, though. So kind of give us the backstory. I don't story. think I'm atypical. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. do this, and especially if you enjoy what you do. My father always told me, baby, everything started with baby. Baby, find something you love to do, and you'll never work a day in your life. And so I never felt sick. Mm -hmm. I just pushed through. But Yes, basically I was running myself in the ground, working, you know, going full steam in fifth gear and getting about four to five hours sleep a night. So, you know, in the past it was always sleep, you know, a diet and exercise. That's how you get healthy. Now it is proven it's diet, exercise, and sleep. So I'm, I'm a big proponent now of helping people change their sleep patterns. And I can tell now, I can tell a difference. If, if I try to go back to that, maybe if there's a project you're working mm -hmm. on and you have to do it one night or two or whatever, but boy, I, I can't do it anymore. And yet I feel at 51, I feel better than I did in my 20s. And so I know I'm doing great. I'm just saying I don't let myself go back there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going back to Egypt. I'm not going to go back and get <laughs> No sick more again. bondage. So right. how do you change your right. sleep patterns? Because I believe we are a sleep-deprived mm -hmm. society. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You shouldn't be able to get on a plane with a bunch of strangers, you know, before noon and fall asleep in all that chaos. But we do, and it's because we are sleep-deprived. Um, basically, what I tell people is just... I actually have um, another book called Seeing the Voice of God, and it's about dreams and, and visions. Well, I felt like I needed to pull in the sleep study doctors and talk about this very topic because mm -hmm. sleep is the mattress of dreams. And mm -hmm. so I list in there, it's called, it's called uh, Laura's ABCs for Zs, and tips to getting to sleep and staying to sleep. Um, and then we go into in the book, you know, dream recall and how nutrition can really help you there in remembering your dreams. So it's all linked together. That's really how I first got interested in nutrition is realizing how, yes, good sleep health and eating and taking the right vitamins and supplements and finding them in your food mainly um, can improve not just your daytime life, but your nighttime life and your dream recall. Well, what's interesting, you call it the 30-day faith detox, mm -hmm. not the 30-day detox. Yeah, it's a so book on faith. So tie in faith for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think the first words of the book are, faith can be fickle. Uh, you know, it, it, it almost has a mind of its own sometimes. And yes, faith is a gift from the Holy Spirit, but it, it, things can just chip away at it. Um, a failed marriage or maybe a demotion at work or you can't seem to get ahead, period, just in your finances. And and you know, the accumulation of what feels like unanswered prayers. And you just, over time, you begin to, you, you start shifting your theology around. You're like, well, mm -hmm. maybe the Lord doesn't want to prosper me, or maybe the Lord doesn't want me well. Mm -hmm. um, and before you know it, you're just not the Christian that you started out. We're not even Christians if we don't have faith, because right. it took faith to become a Christian. Right. So that's why the enemy wants our faith. So that's what the book just really addresses that and how to renew your faith. It just takes a body, mind, and spirit approach. But food and faith together, yeah. most people don't put those two together in one category no. or how they affect each no, other. No, they don't. And they greatly affect them because, um, you know, as I've stated, the Harvard Medical Center, when they did this study connecting the brain and the stomach, they call it the gut-brain link or the gut-brain connection, um, it really opened a lot of people's eyes to the thought that, wow, what I eat affects what I think. And depressions and anxieties, they're learning that what you eat can trigger those, can even cause those. So it works both ways, therefore. What you eat can affect this, but then what you think can also you know, affect your, your intestines and you get mm -hmm. queasy and nervous and those type things. So I just went one step further in the book and made the connection that if you know, what you eat truly does affect your thoughts and if your thoughts truly does affect your faith, then your food can be affecting your, your faith in a mm. very direct way. And uh, so I just believe that God wants us to take care of the temple. I couldn't wait for you to finish that answer to ask you this question. <laughs> so what foods yeah. affect our faith in a positive way? Well, I think that all of them do, okay. you know, but it, positively and negatively. But if you think about it, um, 
when God created man, he put us right down in the middle of a garden. And so I think if we eat colorfully, and I don't mean mm-hmm. Skittles, you know, I have to tell my, <laughs> my, my kids, my husband this, um, like you, you need to make sure that you are eating the, the colors that God has created for you. And one thing that I learned in nutrition school that I just did not know before, and I'm a farmer's daughter, I should have known this, uh, is that the foods, the colors that they are, they're mm-hmm. not just that color because of the mood God was in the moment he created them. The color is a clue of the phytonutrients that are inside. Uh, let's say your lycopene, that's your reds, okay? It's really good for your heart. Isn't that easy mm. to remember? Mm-hmm. Or your blues, the anthocyanins. Those are good, but when you combine them together, it provides something purple. You know how a, an onion, a red onion, sometimes called a purple onion? Mm-hmm. It depends on how much of the anthocyanin is in there. So these phytonutrients mm-hmm. are really God's color-coded way of helping us remember oh, my bones are, are aching. Okay, I need to eat something orange this week. And so I okay. really go into the book how to educate people so that after the 30 day, you know, what do you do on day 31? How do you keep going? You need to know how to eat colorfully and which foods supplement and really support and cleanse each organ. So what's been the response? I'd imagine that <laughs> if, you know, when a person makes it to that 30th yeah. day, I mean, mm-hmm. they are really mm-hmm. excited. Well, I would love to tell you that I fully knew all of the results that I have now seen from all over the world, that I uh, really anticipated the, the massive weight loss that people are having, but I didn't anticipate that. It's not a weight loss book. So I was shocked when I was getting these reports from uh, the first lady, in fact, um, that I heard from was from South Africa. And she said, I'm on day five. And she said, um, I've lost five pounds. And she said, the first four days were a kicker. But now it's turned and I'm getting my fuel and my energy, not from coffee and not from sugar, but from the real foods that God created for my body to be energized by. And, you know, I was concerned. I said, are you eating all the protein that I give you to eat? You know, because I didn't Mm -hmm. want it to be muscle loss. Are you drinking all of your water? They have a lot of liquid every day. She was like, yes, ma'am, I'm doing all of it. I said, wow, then Lord, what are you doing? And sure enough, Mm -hmm. the reports came in from all over the world about this dramatic weight loss. And now that the book, has been out for about four months. I've been checking in with these people with a dramatic weight loss. How are you doing? Is it staying off? It's staying off. And you know why? It's because they treated their spirit and their emotions along with it. They make different choices. And um, I have a a no thanks and a yes please list in there. And they're they're starting to live by the no thanks list, which is, I really don't need that sugar. Mm -hmm. My, My palate was really changed during these 30 days. Um, and so they spent the first 10 days going, I can't wait for day 30. I can't wait to get back. <laughs> and then someday around day 15, I, I hear from them and they say, I'm never going back. Awesome. Wow. Um, well, we want to be a blessing. Laura wants to be a blessing to maybe three or four of you. We have three <laughs> or four extra books. I think we have four. So for the first four people who write in at live at Lucy.com, we'll give you a complimentary autographed copy of Laura Harris Smith's book, The 30 Day Faith Detox. To connect with Laura, go to lauraharrissmith.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to The 30 Day Faith Detox. Now remember, we need your name, address, and uh, send it in and just say, yes, I'd like The 30 Day Faith Detox. Harvest continues in just a moment.